The two basic levels of immune system defense include the innate or nonspecific level and the adaptive or specific level. The adaptive immunity or specific defense includes both families of B lymphocytes or B cells and T lymphocytes or T cells. B cells produce antibodies that float through the blood or lymph to the antigen, so it is often referred to as humoral immunity where humoral refers to fluids. T cells attack antigens directly, so they are often referred to as cellular immunity, as they engage in more hand-to-hand -hand or cell-to-cell -cell combat. B cells and T cells of the acquired immunity or specific defenses are activated under two conditions. An antigen must be present and the release of chemicals from a cell that has been invaded or damaged. The response time to eliminate an antigen is very slow upon first exposure. It takes 10 to 20 days for the acquired immunity or specific defenses to mount an adequate response to eliminate the offending antigens. The next time that same antigen is encountered, the response is much faster because we generated memory cells after the first exposure so the cells do not have to learn all over again how to fight that antigen. This is the whole purpose of vaccinations. For diseases that can kill or permanently damage us, we purposely expose ourselves to a harmless form of that antigen so our immune system can develop the memory cells and fighting ability against that antigen. Then, if we are ever exposed, our immune system can remove that threat before it can do us any harm. B lymphocytes have many different subtypes, each with a different role. Naive or inactive B cells are present at birth. There are hundreds of thousands of different naive B cells, each with different antibodies on their surface. The antibodies on the surface each have a different shape that may match a potential antigen or invader. Activated B cells are naive B cells that have bound to an antigen. Activated B cells form plasma cells to make more of that same antibody and also forms memory cells to remember that antigen any time it is encountered again throughout the person's lifetime. Here we can visualize the process. Naive B lymphocytes have antibodies on their surface that are all different. Their antibodies have many different configurations. Each has a shape that fits a different potential antigen. Once an antigen enters the body, the naive B cell with the matching antibody binds to it. Now that B cell is an activated B cell. Activated B cells immediately form memory cells and plasma cells for that particular antibody configuration. The plasma cells then manufacture hundreds of thousands of antibodies that match the particular antigen that is in the body. If a different antigen enters the body, a different naive B cell is activated and produces antibodies specific for that antigen. There are hundreds of thousands of different antibody configurations. The antibodies are made by plasma B cells. There are five different classes of antibodies which are classified based on the shape and location. IgA is found in mucous membranes, particularly along the gut. IgE are involved in allergies. IgD are found in the blood. IgG is the most abundant antibody in the blood when the plasma B cells are responding to an antigen. IgG can cross the placenta to protect the baby from a particular antigen. IgM is the antibody that is found in naive B cells. There are two parts to an antibody, a variable region that is unique to that antigen it binds to and a constant region that is the same for all antibodies. The binding sites on the variable portion of the antibody are each unique to a different antigen. The antibody binding sites binds with its specific antigen like a lock and key. Once the antibody is bound to an antigen, the antigen is rendered helpless by a number of different ways. It is either immediately neutralized where its toxic chemicals are inactivated, or the antigens are agglutinated or clumped together where phagocytes can consume and eliminate them, or it is completely destroyed using the complement chemical process. There are also a number of different types of T lymphocytes. Naive T lymphocytes are matured in the thymus. These have hundreds of thousands of surface receptors that may potentially combine with an antigen. 
The sensitized T cells are ones that have encountered an antigen. Effector T cells are the cells that are working to fight the antigen, and there are three types. The cytotoxic T cell directly binds and kills the antigen. Helper T cells work to mobilize other immune responses such as B cell mobilization, and suppressor T cells prevent overactivity of the immune system. Just like B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes also make memory cells so that the antigen fighting mechanisms for a particular antigen is retained and able to be recalled if that antigen is ever encountered again. Here we can visualize the process. Naive T lymphocytes have antigen receptors on their surface, each unique to a different antigen, whether it is a foreign cell or self-cell infected with a virus or altered by cancer. These surface receptors are not antibodies, but bind and have similar binding shapes. Once an antigen presenting cell has presented a portion of the antigen that matches the receptor on the naive T cell, it becomes a sensitized T cell. Sensitized T cells immediately form cytotoxic T cells to attack any antigen with that binding feature. Cytotoxic T cells go to the tissue areas where the antigen is found and bind to the infected or altered cell, destroying it. Sensitized T cells also make memory T cells to create more cytotoxic T cells when the antigen is encountered again in the future. Helper T cells also form, which facilitate B cell activation to coordinate the, the attack on the antigen. Finally, suppressor T cells are also formed, which regulate the B cell antibody production and the cytotoxic T cell attack. This helps with self tolerance and works to prevent our own immune system from attacking our own cells. However, autoimmune attacks, where our body cells attack our healthy cells, still do occur, and the reason for that is still not clear. However, autoimmune attacks, where our immune cells attack our healthy cells, do still occur, and the reason for that is still not clear. Recall from the innate immunity or nonspecific defense that the phagocytic cells are also antigen-presenting cells. This is an important activation process for the acquired immunity or specific defense. The presenting of an antigen to T cells will allow them to respond in larger numbers to destroy that specific antigen. In addition to the phagocytes, there are a number of other cells throughout the body that act as antigen-presenting cells. There are two basic types of immunity, passive and active. Passive immunity is when you receive antibodies that were made by someone else. Natural passive immunity takes place between a mother and a child across the placenta and again when the child nurses. This allows the baby protection from any sickness that the mother has or is being exposed to by giving the baby her antibodies to fight the antigens. This is a clever way of protecting a baby from local diseases by using the mother's immune system to make the necessary antibodies while the baby is still vulnerable. Artificial passive immunity is when a serum is injected into a person containing antibodies from a person that has survived a disease. The recipient gets the antibodies to fight the disease immediately, but does not receive the memory cells for future protection. Active immunity is when the body's own immune system develops the acquired immunity or specific defense cells to fight an antigen. Natural active immunity is when you get sick, your body's immune system fights the antigen and develops the memory cells so that the next exposure will be fought more quickly. Artificial active immunity is when you get an immunization. The shot contains a harmless form of a specific dangerous antigen such as smallpox. This allows your body the exposure to the antigen without the risk of getting sick. Your body then responds to the antigen by developing the acquired immunity or specific defense cells so that you can be protected if you are exposed to that antigen in the future.